All right, um, the next thing before I um, show you some things to do to make it fancier, I want to teach you the chords okay. and the tune. Um, a big part of uh, fiddle playing and um, is jamming and creating music together. Um, in order to do that, um, you can have a variety of different instruments from fiddle to guitar, banjo, or bass. Um, and in old school practices or in the classical field, the violin usually always is playing the melody. Okay. And the other rhythm instruments are supposed to be taking care of the chords. Um, but we are going to break out of that habit and start playing <laughs> chords, especially if you know a lot of fiddle players. It's not not such a great jam to only have melody players. So the chords are a really, really fantastic way to play music with other people. And it also can, once you have that harmonic knowledge, you'll know how to add double stops into your melody that will go with the chord, that will go along with the chord progression. Okay, so this tune is in the key of A. Um, and the way that you can tell that other, by, other than knowing what um, occidentals you played, but also it's the home key. It's the home note that we kept going back to. I know we started on C sharp, mm -hmm. um, but the, the note that we kept landing on was A. That's where we felt finished and, and at home. So we're in the key of A. Um, so I know you've played scales and arpeggios for your whole life, um, but to use it on the, in fiddle knowledge, um, if we're in the key of A, we're going to find four, excuse me, three chords that are used in Western music all the time. And we call them the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord, which you've also <laughs> appreciated the whole time, right? Okay. So in the key of A, the one chord is A. If we were in the key of zebras, the one chord would be zebras. And if we were in the key of houses, the one chord would be houses. Okay. So in the key of A, the one chord is A. And in order to figure out what four and five would be, you'd go up your scale and say the letter that is appropriate with that number. So the four chord would be D, and the five chord would be E. Okay. Okay. So that's the whole. That's the um, root of each chord. But we need to know what chords, what other notes to play to fill out the actual chord. Okay. So let's spell the arpeggios of each one of those chords. So one chord, an A chord, would be what three notes? So A, C sharp, E. Excellent. Okay. And then a four chord, which was on the D, would be D, D F sharp, A. Mm -hmm. And the five chord, which was E, would be E, G sharp, G sharp, and B. Right. right. Okay. So those are the three notes, and we can decide which two we're going to play from each one of those. I like to start with the most basic chord voicing on your lowest two strings that you have, and we can stick with that for a long time, and then we can get more complicated after that, but until you get, until you're completely comfortable with it. So for the A chord, the one chord, which we spell A, C sharp, E, it would be good for you to play your A and your E on your G and D string. So you're using your first finger on both two strings, okay. so that's your one chord. Okay. Okay. Your D chord, your four chord, which was D, F sharp, A, just roll your first finger off the D string. Keep the A, but go to open D. Right. Okay. okay, so go back and play one. B is your second finger on the G string, okay, and then and then your first finger on the G D string. Okay, okay so that's five. Okay, four was D chord. Okay. And then one is both. Okay. So this is A. You have your first finger on the A and the E. And I'm talking about notes, not strings. Okay. First finger would be on both the G and the D strings, which means an A and an E. Okay. Okay, so that's our one chord. And a four chord is an A on the G string and an open D. And five chord is a B on the G string and an E on the D string. Okay, okay. great. Okay, so that's one, four, and five. Okay. Okay, so memorizing that is incre incredibly helpful. And eventually what we'd want to be able to do is be able to know 1, 4, and 5 in any of the fiddle keys. Okay. And, I mean, by fiddle keys, it would be good for you to know that in D-flat, but there really aren't any fiddle <laughs> tunes in D-flat that I know of. So the fiddle keys would be A, B-flat, B, C, D, 
sat sometimes E flat in blue, bluegrass world E F G. Okay. So knowing one four five and all of those keys would be a good thing to do eventually. Okay. So having that memorized and then learning the chord progression of where the chords fall in Little Eliza Jane. So the main thing is to, to be able to hear where the chord changes. So at the beginning, I want you to play the melody again, and I'm going to play the chords this time. And you tell you look at me or tell me to stop when I've changed a chord, when I've moved moved from something other than one. Okay. Okay. So I know a girl from Baltimore, and. Changed. I was on the B. Or on the um the second. The phrase. fourth phrase. Oh the fourth oh, right? If was you're thinking I? if you're thinking in smaller chunks. So uh, Oh right, all right. That's the fourth phrase, yeah. Okay. So on the fourth phrase we're gonna change to something. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna change to the five chord there. Okay. Okay, and then we're gonna go back to one because this five one sounds like a question and then an answer. Which brings us home. Okay. Okay. So let's practice going from the five chord to the one chord. The five chord was your E chord. So you play an E on the D string and a B on the G string. And then one, which is your first finger on both strings. Right. Five one again. Nice. Okay. So that happens on the fourth phrase. Okay. Okay. So let's play. I want you to play a one chord for the first three phrases. Okay. Okay. And then on phrase four, you're going to hit. Five, one. Okay. Okay, I'll play the melody this time. And We've already played five, so, no, so it's a four. right, it didn't, right, we hadn't played that chord yet, so we're going to four, and the rhythm would be, okay, okay, so let's practice going one, for, one to four, okay, okay, so go back to one, so the rhythm is one. Phrase one. Okay. So what is it also means it's phrase three. Because phrase one and phrase three are the same. Okay. Does that make sense? The yeah. melody was the same for phrase one and three. It was right. the oh Eliza. Right. Okay. So when we come back to that phrase, it's gonna be exactly the same thing. Okay. Okay. Then phrase two for the melody was which we've played already in the A part. Do you remember what right. chord we were playing in the second measure? Was that the one five? That was the one. Five one is oh, the five, fourth measure. Oh, five one. Right. So just the one, because in the A part we played three ones in a row. So the first phrase was one, one, and then the second phrase one. Okay. So we were just playing one chord during that. Okay. Okay. So since it's the same notes that we played in the A part that we're going to use in the B part, it will be the same chords. Okay. Okay. And then, I so... I'm going to remember all this. That's okay. <laughs> I can tell you again. But, so, if we're in the B part, the, the new phrase is the Oh, Eliza, which we just learned was one, one four, four, one. one. Right. And then the second phrase is in both parts is going to be one. one. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. Now we're in the B <coughs> part, so the third phrase is Oh, Eliza, so that's going to be one, four, one. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And then the fourth phrase is the same as the fourth phrase in the A part. So we're going to hit five, five one. one. Okay. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. So when we're using repeated material, the, the chords are most often the same okay. as well. So let me play the chord progression once for you for the B part. Ready? And great. Okay, let's try that. Do you want a review of one, four, and five? Yeah. Okay, so one. Okay. And then go into the chords, A, A, B, B. So I'll play, I'll back you up first, and then I'll play. <laughs> 